Welcome to Indie Resources third video on Node.js and Socket.io and our eighth video on building a HTML5 web game. Um, in this video I wanted to do more of a visual representation of what's going on because in the in the upcoming videos we're going to be changing around a lot of the code and turning it into more of a polling type um, server than, than what we're doing now. We're going to try to make it more compatible with a full multiplayer MMO type engine and just kind of take it in that direction since that seems to be the popular direction to go um, when, since I started these videos. So I, I kind of wanted to just give a little better explanation of what's going on since in the other video we kind of went a little fast and we were coding at the same time and, and this is just about kind of showing you and once you once you watch this video you'll kind of you'll get a much better much, much better idea of how this works. Um, I don't have my Wacom on me, so you have to have to just um, bear with me on the ugly graphics that we're fixing to do. But um, so we have Node up here, and when we call Node, and like I said, I've left my Wacom, so I'm just using a mouse. So we have Node right here. Node w when we run our server.bat, it's just calling this this JS script of of our app that we have app.js. So that that's what's basically Node is calling, and this is starting our server. So this right here is our server <clears throat> and it's listening for clients because it's listening on the localhost 8080 so right now we're listening for clients when a client connects so we have this client and they go to our they go to our localhost and it's on 8080 and it sends out so it connects and inside of our code inside of that client let's go to our index <clears throat> The first thing it's going to do is it's going to connect. So that's what we've done here. We've it's saying, "Hey, we found it. It connected." Um, then it's going to run through its normal code, which is one of the first things it does is in player, it does this socket emit initialize player. So the client comes up here and says, "Okay, well the first thing I need to do is I need to call initialize player." So it's sending that data up there as initialize player and hitting the server. The server then gets that call, initialize player, it it does its stuff and then it emits back out to everyone add player. Well right now there's only this single client connected, so nothing really happens. <clears throat> it it connects to them but it, it, it does code. It, it goes to this client and it codes, but it's only one client, so there isn't really no point. Because if you remember in our code, it says where player name doesn't equal the game name. So it, it does send it to them, but the, it just nothing happens because we've, we've coded that out. So let's say another client connects. And it, it connects, and then it also sends out add player. Well, <clears throat> when it goes to add, add player, this, the, the server then sends to all clients connected add player. Well this one isn't going to do anything because it's the same game name but this one is because it's not the same game name so it's going to go back to the the client and it's going to go to its add player function and it's going to call it <clears throat> and it's going to create and spawn the player and do everything it needs to do. Now the other thing that's happening all the time is every five ticks each client is sending and I'll tell you what I'll I'll do a different color for this each client is sending its move data it's it basically it's player moving and that's going forward and let, so let's say this one sends it this one sends it well when it gets to, to the node when it gets the actual application to the server it is um it's running its received data and it's doing socket broadcast dot, dot emit so that means it's sending it to everyone but the initial client that it sent it in so this data and I'll just come in here and change it to red it, so it's sending that, that data to here when this data goes back when it's saying okay I've moved it's sending it to here and not back to here so there is no connection in between these two guys right here there's nothing whatsoever this is a dead zone they are not actually connecting back and forth everything goes to the server and comes back and if you look at this this actually looks like a really scary monster or something with its legs and its weird feet but anyway um, the the clients don't don't actually connect to each other everything goes to the server and the server sends back so you gotta understand that how there, there's two different ways that I want to show you guys 
how we can do this. The current way that I'm showing you where every five ticks it's sending this data, which is good for for um, Twitch based games where you're you have a lot of action going on and you need them to, to update a lot. You're not going to get as many clients going out there, but you're still going to be able to get quite a few. Now if we add a couple more clients here, let's say this client connects and when this client connects he's going to send his ad player data and then that's going to send ad player back to everybody else. And then there are all these clients are going to add the player. So all these players that are located on this guy, let's, there's now two players plus the main player. <clears throat> they have nothing to do essentially with these guys right here. So if if something if something was to goof up here, it's it the only thing these guys are receiving is what they're telling him. So it's not like and I guess the point I'm trying to get across is there's nothing going on like this. These are these are client based entities that are only relying on whatever's coming from the servers and that's what these guys are telling it so that's kind of it's kind of kind of showing you that there's no real connection I guess when I show you the disconnect it'll, it'll be even more clear which I'm sure it's clear enough now so this guy's player and this guy's two players are all related to this client and the only thing it's receiving is where it's moving is it but this client has created it so <clears throat> let's say we have a disconnect on one of them and I guess I'll move to a to another deal and we'll, we'll create another client real quick Let's say we got another client out here and of course he sends his ad player and that goes out to all these other guys and now they've added them well <clears throat> let's say this guy disconnects so bam he's gone <clears throat> okay what that's gonna do is is node node is gonna pick up that disconnect that we have and that's that's a function that runs inside of of the socket IO and it's it's going to say okay we've lost connection with this guy so we need to go ahead and run this and that's when it goes through and deletes that player and it does a net replayer and it does the message so what it's what it's doing is node says hey that guy disconnected it's sending disconnect data uh, let's go with some green it's sending disconnect data to everybody saying hey this guy just disconnected you need to run this function the 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 message function the other thing it does is it does net replayer um, so what that does is these each one of these clients comes in here and says okay delete all entities and rebuild them on what the the, the app what the actual server says is there the servers holding all of that data and just passing it back and forth now let's say this guy reconnects it's a brand new socket it's a brand new connection um, so he's coming up with a new player name and it's resending ad player again when he reconnects and of course that's going to send the the ad player and everything else that's going on I know this isn't the greatest representation and, and, it, and it's already simple I just wanted to make sure everybody understood the process of what was happening of what I just said and hopefully this helps better explain it because what we're going to do is we're going to change every we're going to change this completely and let's start over with a brand new one <clears throat> the new method we're going to do in these fall in these upcoming videos is we are going to we're going to have our what's wrong with my pen oh wrong one <clears throat> we're going to have our server up here which is the the node and the and the app uh, node and app it's the exact same thing and <clears throat> when a client connects all that's pretty much going to be the same so let's put us two clients here the difference is when we have our two clients is <clears throat> when the player moves we're going to do on an input on a on a on an input pushed and input release type state to where when when the when the player and let me let me figure out the best way to to say this let's do this green's going to be our input push so let's say he hits forward to move which is the w key he hits the w key and it's going to send to the server this guy's moving forward it's going to con it's going to send a message to all the other players this guy just moved forward this guy did and it's going to take that other entity that's in here and it's going to move him forward which will will move forward <clears throat> that entity is going to continue to move forward this is only going to do this once this is just one simple connection saying he's moving forward do go forward we're going to create code that says okay he's moving forward continue to move forward until I say otherwise until the server says otherwise <clears throat> when this entity releases its forward button it's going to send another message 
that's going to be a release, we'll just call it release, that's a terrible R, <clears throat> that now he's going to come in and say, okay, he just released the button, we're going to stop going forward, we're done. So if you notice, the five ticks, we were just sending data constantly. This way, we're only sending it when a player moves. And if you think about it, when you're moving, sometimes you'll walk forward for quite a few seconds. So you can literally go seconds with nothing being sent to that to that player whatsoever. <clears throat> so, and, and it goes with all the keys. If they hit the D key to who to, to go left, they're going to send the D key, and it's going to continue to do that. If they're not doing anything but just sitting there, they're just going to sit there. Now, I haven't exactly... Um, <clears throat> Haven't thought about a whole lot about combat on this yet. Um, we're going to do that when we get in there. I just want to kind of get the movement thing going first. But as you can see, this creates a lot less data going on. So, and and let's just take and let's just take our other example. Well, better not. Let's just create a new one over here. Um, let's just compare the two real quick. If we take this server app that was on our old our old way with two clients. Every five ticks, you got data coming back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now let's say that, let, let's take a couple seconds. Within a couple seconds, this is going to send several connections back and forth to clients. You take that times a thousand clients and you've just got massive amounts of data just shooting back and forth constantly. This route, if you've got a thousand people, um, you're still going to have a lot of data going back and forth, but you got to think how many of those thousands of people are really going to be moving. A lot of them are going to be chatting, a lot of them are going to be fighting, a lot of them are going to be just standing there, um, a lot of them are going to be eating a bowl of cereal, not doing anything. So it really does um, change the whole data flow and everything about it. And that's the way most MMOs do it today. And that's where I kind of want to go. It's more of a polling state. It's, it's checking for keys. And, and, and the, the Twitch base, the Twitch based combat isn't so possible because you're still sending a lot of data. It is possible now. That's the way, um, that's the way they do it. They still have that type of, of, um, of action combat but this is more of that kind of state and that's why you see a lot of first person shooters with a lot less of allowable characters because you're sending so much more data we're gonna try to we're gonna focus around this method right here and I'm on the next videos we're gonna change all of our and I'm gonna kinda do it live so everybody gets it and understands it we're gonna change all of our um, movement to match this so we can actually make a full MMO